You have seen the signs around you. The gradual creeping, decay, and dysfunction. You have realized that something is wrong with the media and the people around you. You know that you are different. This is why you are ready to become a receiver. You have been issued a series of audio cassette tapes that are part of our system for advancing insight. By continually listening to these tapes, you will drown out and eventually counteract the negative influences from your environment. Once you have absorbed these tapes, you will have taken the first step towards awakening your true self. The media is a threat. We have a technique to help. We use tapes as part of this technique. You must listen to them to advance. I'm so sorry. I've always been such a disappointment. I would have just kept getting more pathetic. I can't stand to be a burden on you any longer. I hope one day you can forgive me. I love you. I'm sorry. We live in a world in which hostile thoughts and ideas are constantly present in the media, pressing in on our consciousness. 
events are often also outside of our control. Outside of our control, but not outside of control. Others use these concepts and events to create this anxiety. Thoughts flow in a sequence, and by inserting harmful media into your life, your thoughts can be hijacked. Once you are behaving in a reactive state, you will spread these contaminated ideas to others, allowing them to degrade more people. Practice basic media safety. Control your information environment. Act, don't react. After World War II, a military study concluded that only a quarter of American soldiers were willing to line up their sights on a human target. Now, to combat this problem, the army found ways to dampen our natural aversion to killing one another. They replaced bullseye targets with human silhouettes, uh, made training conditions more similar to actual combat, and trained recruits to avoid taking personal responsibility for killing. You know, after enough training, you can eventually learn to stop seeing people at all and just see silhouette targets everywhere, even in the mirror. Many theories exist on the nature of the mind. Do we live in a simulation? Are our thoughts the result of chemicals and structures formed by random mutations? Or perhaps we are gifted with a soul by a higher power? The reason these questions persist is because previous attempts have failed to find a convincing answer. What is clear is that the mind harbors immense power over perception, and that changing perception changes the most important aspects of reality.
Together, we have laid the foundation. You have shown great potential, but the potential is yet to be realized. We have sent the message. Can you hear it? There is an insidious force moving through your media, weakening the mind and causing widespread dysfunction. We call this the threat. We have developed a technique called mind tech to combat this threat. A new set of tapes has been issued to train and prepare you. Each receiver will train with a core mind tech. This functions as a checklist and readies the mind for action. It allows you to break from a reactive cycle caused by outside influence and allows you to regain control. Like all mind tech, your core is a sequence of thoughts. Where are you? What is your name? What is today's date? What is your firearm? Then take a deep breath and listen. If your friend makes a joke about hurting themselves, it might just be that, a joke. Or it might be their last cry for help before they are killed by the threat. Get them alone later, ask about it, and really listen to their answer. It's probably nothing, but in this case, it's, it's so much better to have 10 false positives than one false negative.
Most receivers are initially skeptical about the existence of the threat. This is a good sign. A receiver should maintain a, a healthy mental immune system that consistently questions the evidence for all beliefs, both old and new. A receiver never maintains a belief just because it's the first one they've heard or because it's the culture they were born into. However, in this case, the appropriate behavior is the same, whether you believe in the literal existence of the threat or not. If it doesn't exist, you will have strengthened your mind and trained your body for nothing. But aren't those goals inherently worthy? In this... It's common knowledge that you get better results the harder you try, but like most common knowledge, this is wrong. Receivers know that there is an optimal level of effort. Too low and you might slack off. Too high and you can start to choke under pressure. In the middle, you get the best results. When confronting the, the threat, a receiver must always remain calm. Most people panic under pressure and, and, and shoot before properly aiming. Remember that it's better to fire one shot that hits than ten shots that miss.
While some concepts are useful, others are the exact opposite. These terminating thoughts take complex and useful ideas and turn them into a simplistic cliche that is as incorrect as it is useless. The appeal of these thoughts is that they give a false feeling of certainty and authority. But they block true mental development. The functional mind questions and observes. It looks inward at the form of ideas applied in the mind as well as outward in the world. It views uncertainty as the twin sibling of curiosity. The dead mind is constructed of terminating thoughts. There is no room for feelings beyond a thin, fragile mockery of self-satisfaction. Personality is replaced with rote, checkbox ticking behavior and reactivity. Human interaction becomes a grotesque parody where anything that doesn't fall neatly into a simplistic taxonomy of behavior gets ignored or assaulted. This causes a person to become less and less until ultimately they vanish.
This building, this, oh, this place, it doesn't make much sense. Like, w while I know this isn't the same room as before, it still feels familiar. It's more like a fictional place than the real world. It's, oh, it's like someone made copies of, of copies and, and lost the original intent of all the objects uh, long ago. Kill drones don't feel pain, don't feel fear. They will keep trying to kill you until you make it physically impossible for them to function. The surest way to disable them completely is to destroy their batteries found in the thickest part of the base of turrets or the rear body of flying drones. While Colt won most of the U.S. military contracts, the Smith and Wesson Model 10 remained the weapon of choice for U.S. police forces until the 70s, when they switched to high-capacity Wonder 9 pistols. The Model 10 did win a few U.S. military contracts, including the Air Force, Coast Guard, and Navy. In World War II, air crews used the Model 10 revolver both for self-defense and for uh, emergency signal. with tracer rounds. In the 20s, police were facing significant resistance by prohibition gangsters and found that the 38 long Colt round just wasn't strong enough. Smith and Wesson started rechambering their Model 10s for the slightly more powerful 38 Special cartridge, but the converted models were not quite right and the uh, fired cartridges had a tendency to get stuck from the increased pressure and reloaded.
Yeah, yeah, I tried to tell you. I tried to, to, to get support. I did everything they said I should. And it didn't work. It didn't work. This, this is all your fault. All of you. I hope you all finally understand what you did to me and hate yourselves for it. See you in hell. People often wonder where the Glock 17 came from. So, while Herr Gaston Glock slept through his day job as a manager of an Austrian radiator factory, he dreamed up new ways to use the old Soviet metal press he kept in his garage. With poetic inspiration, he named his first product a doorknob, the Glock 1. His second invention was the Glock 2 curtain rod, and so on, up to the Glock 15 entrenching tool for the Austrian army. When the Austrian infantry adopted the Steyr Aug assault rifle with a radical design based on a polymer frame, he learned to use an injection molding machine to create the matching Glock 16 bayonet with a polymer handle. Now, while delivering his bayonets to the Ministry of Defense, he overheard two colonels complaining about the latest pistol trials. None of the competitors were hitting the mark. Glock asked them if he could uh, try designing a pistol, and they laughed in his face. Now, how could some random civilian compete with old masters like Beretta, Steyr, and, and Sig Sauer? He had no experience with firearms, so he bought a few and took them apart, and, and tried to figure out how he could make a new one to match the Steyr AUG. One year later, he filed a patent for his latest invention, the Glock 17 pistol. The most important virtue of a receiver is mental resilience, and the only way to build resilience is to practice rebounding from adversity. Indecision and anxiety are the natural result of disordered thoughts. Ideas have weight and potential. They exist in a sequence linked to other concepts that precede and, and follow them. Mental exercises will forge these broken links into an unbreakable chain to harness your will. <laughs>
The Austrian military was very happy with the Glock 17, but their elite Einsatzkommando Kobe uh, units wanted even more firepower, so they requested a Glock that could fire in fully automatic mode. Sometimes you just need to put 34 holes in someone in less than two seconds, uh, or at least in their general direction. Now, Glock reluctantly sent them his updated model, the Glock 18 machine pistol, an excellent tool for converting money into noise at 1200 RPM. This was a very simple conversion, because it's simpler to design self-loading firearms to be fully automatic to begin with, and then slow them down with a disconnector piece. Glock just added a switch to, um, disconnect the disconnector. An enterprising Chinese gunsmith realized that you could disable the Glock 17 disconnector at home by just sticking a precisely shaped piece of metal into the backplate and started selling conversion kits. The American Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms consider that fun switch to be the world's smallest machine gun, so don't order one online, unless you're lonely and really want to hang out with an ATF squad.
We are all taught to carefully monitor what we put into our bodies. We need to eat this and avoid that, and have this other thing in moderation. But we are never taught how to curate what we put into our minds. There's no use having a healthy body if, if your mind is poisoned. Now, the threat has used this control to remove choice over what you consume. If you uncritically view media, you are directly allowing the threat to, to infiltrate your thoughts and to compromise your brain from the inside. When discharging a firearm, we learn to control our most basic autonomic reactions. To blink or flinch risks missing the target, resulting in death. With slow, steady breathing, muscles neither fully tensed or relaxed, we train our focus. We breathe in, we check the breach. We breathe out, we release the safety. We breathe in, we aim at the target. We slowly exhale while we squeeze the trigger. Since we are already prepared to operate the firearm, we neither anticipate or react to the sound or the recoil. Instead, we breathe in and aim at the target. We slowly exhale while we squeeze the trigger.
shorter guns are harder to aim for many reasons, well, including decreased parallax between the front and rear sights, decreased rotational inertia, decreased muzzle velocity, and increased perceived recoil. Now, it's possible to take a long shot with a snub-nosed revolver, but very difficult. The unconscious mind is critical in the development of mind tech. What seems like downtime is the slow and meticulous refinement of your true self. When less attention is spent on fleeting banalities, the mind grows stronger in reality A. The threat understands this and has created systems to inundate you with a sea of interruptions each one claiming to be critical, and each one focusing on your desires and fears. Each distraction on its own seems harmless, like a drop of rain. But like a relentless downpour, this unending torrent is able to erode even a mountain. Limit your overall exposure to distractions. Uninterrupted time focused on a task is time spent honing your mind tech. In this way, training the body is training the mind.
Cooper's fourth rule of gun safety is to find your target and what is beyond it. Bullets can penetrate a lot farther than most people think. Um, how many interior sheetrock walls do you think a typical 9mm bullet will go through? One? Uh, two? More like 20. In a typical gunfight, more shots miss than hit, but all bullets end up somewhere. Unless you live alone in a rural area, there is no pistol or rifle that won't put your family in Many people believe that the brain is the seat of consciousness, yet important thoughts and feelings are carried out in ganglia, clusters of neurons found throughout the body. The mind stretches within the body and controls it. Conditions in the body reflect the mind, and damage to the body is damage to the mind as well. This meaningless existence anymore. There's no point to anything. We're, we're just killing time until the heat death of the universe. Nobody will remember us. Nobody cares if, if, if I live or die. All of humanity is just mold on an orange. I don't even know why I'm writing this. Goodbye.
This tape is designed to test your focus in the face of distraction. Maintain focus on your breathing. How did you do? If your attention wandered, that is normal. Just notice that without judgment. Let's try again. Good job. Receivers know that the biggest predictor of success is true grit. The ability to maintain resolve in the face of adversity. The only way to develop this trait is through practice.
Cooper's third rule of gun safety is to keep your finger off the trigger until your sights are on the target. There are many physiological reactions that can cause your hand to uh, tighten involuntarily. If your finger is on the trigger and you're surprised or stumble or tighten the other hand, the gun will fire and make a hole in whatever it's pointed at. This is especially important. important when and drawing or holstering. Like takeoffs and landings in aircraft, this is when most accidents occur. If your attention wanders for a second and you try to holster your gun without removing your finger from the trigger, you will shoot yourself in the leg. If you are trying to draw quickly, you can easily grab the trigger and shoot yourself in the leg. The physical body is a projection cast by the luminous mind. As such, all physical interactions are mental. While in-person interaction may use abstraction, such as words, much more communication is taking place via proximity. If you focus, you can feel the subconscious mind reaching, dreaming in reality A. This true understanding is beyond words. The threat has limited influence on the physical world and seeks to subvert true interactions. 
They do this by inverting values, making the lowest forms of communication, words and images, seem like the only ones. People degraded by these ideas isolate themselves, thinking this mediated communication is a form of communion. Not only is it insufficient, but it's also a channel for the threat. They co-opt even this thin thread of connection until you are totally isolated. The more you use their compromised channels, the more isolated you become. This is why we train together. To progress in mind tech is to become aware of your own thoughts. Eventually, each thought will become clear and distinct. Solid, incredibly dense, but irregularly shaped. When combined with other specific thoughts in the right pattern, they will fit into place, forming a solid wall of defense. Close your eyes and imagine that you are a cloud floating over the city. Breathe in. One, two, three, four. Hold. One, two, three, four. Breathe out. One, two, three, four. Pause. One, two, three, four. Breathe in. A tow drone weaving between the buildings. Hold. The drone looks up, seeing.
Cooper's second rule of gun safety is to never point the gun at something you are not willing to destroy. Now this seems obvious, but is easy to forget in the moment. If you are training at the range and a burning hot shell casing falls down your shirt, are you prepared to keep the gun pointed at the target? Uh, if the gun malfunctions, are you sure you won't point it sideways to get a better look at what's wrong? Uh, what if you were preparing to take it apart for routine maintenance? Are you still paying attention to which way the barrel is pointing? Many accidents take place while cleaning guns, because that's often when we let our guard down. While physical training is less important than mental conditioning, receivers know that the two are linked. To move the body requires thought and focus, and similarly, certain actions and physical situations induce specific states of mind. By training one, you train the other. While it's tempting to imagine that the Colt 1911 emerged fully formed from Browning's head like the goddess Athena, in fact, it took more than a decade of iteration. The first mass-produced model, the Colt 1900, looks like a five-year-old's crayon drawing of a knife. It fired 38 caliber rounds and had a bizarre... You could push the rear side down to block the firing. And even so, the combination of the bolt and barrel shroud into a single slide was brilliant and set the standard for all modern pistols. It was designed to compete with the German Mauser C96 broom handle, uh, now better known as Han Solo's blaster in Star Wars, and the unfortunately named Manlicker 1896. Even in its early stage, the Colt 1900 compared well enough to its rivals that the US Army started distributing it to officers and, and cavalry for field trials.
what is the fundamental characteristic of balance? A stone, perfectly balanced, doesn't move. It is this precarious lack of motion, but with so much potential that's remarkable. Now, to balance the mind, one needs to bring ideas and feelings into alignment, where they are neither random nor stagnant, equally outward and inward, neither entirely positive nor negative. Within this narrow space of calmness lies the mind's potential. Failure to find balance results in a chain reaction of cascading thoughts and feelings, like a stone falling out of place, running into the next with no end and no control. It's common knowledge that some needs are a higher priority than others. People note that in order to pursue some, others must be fulfilled first. They frame the complex situation using a, a simple, unrealistic example. It's like how you can't be happy if you don't have air to breathe. <laughs> well, these simplifications are used to hide more complex truths. That the body sustains the mind, and the mind sustains the body. 
The most present needs are in the domain of the mind. Without baseline function of thought, you can find yourself without the will to move or eat. Strengthening the mind by developing focus and resilience is the goal of a technique we call mind tech. America had its first conflict with radical Islamic insurgents in the Philippines in 1899, when they politely asked the Moro people to stop enslaving Christians. U.S. soldiers were used to fighting enemies who would surrender when shot, or at least make some attempt at self-preservation. The Moro swordsmen were different. 38 caliber bullets didn't seem to stop them at all. If anything, they just made them even holier. Soldiers favor the direct approach, so they asked for bigger bullets. But how big exactly? Colonels Thompson and Lagarde performed a series of controversial and morbid tests to determine the stopping power of various cartridges by firing them into hanged human bodies and live cows. After two days of tests, they decided that the new 1911 pistol should fire 45 caliber rounds. Now, Thompson later designed a submachine gun, a nickname the Tommy gun, that was <laughs> the same bullets, presumably to defend against attack by 30 to 50 feral cows. Every single day is the worst day of my life. It just keeps getting worse and worse. Every day, I step over junkies and, and human waste on my way to my third job, just to make a, a dent in my mountain of debt. The planet is dying. The rich, the rich own everything. We keep killing each other for no reason. I'm ashamed to be a part of this world. I give up. Rich was starting to think about death. Rich was starting to think about death a lot after the sudden death of his sister. He loaned his sidearm to a friend because he was worried that he would be possessed by the threat. He was right to be worried. The threat took control of his body and drove him to the Golden Gate Bridge. He was breathing in the foggy air, about to let go, when two officers grabbed him. Now, later, when he progressed further in his receiver training, Rich started to see that he had never been a burden on, on anyone. Humans have a fundamental need to, to help one another, and by gracefully accepting the help that he needed, he allowed his friends and family to fulfill their own needs to feel useful and appreciated. It took him years of slow improvement and, and cultivating healthy habits, but he eventually found that he had repaid all of the kindness and, and support that he had ever received, and then some. Jen had been told her whole life that Even though everything seemed to be going well in his life on paper, John could feel the color and taste bleeding from the world and knew that he was under attack from the threat. He uh, temporarily pawned his sidearm so that it couldn't be used against him. The threat poisoned him, but did not quite kill him. His hospital experience gave him some perspective that allowed him to make a breakthrough in his receiver training. John realized that small ups and downs look like mountains and valleys from close up, but if you zoom out, you can see that peace, nutrition, health, and freedom have been improving throughout the entirety of recorded history, and with hard work we can make sure that trend continues. As hard as the threat tries to destroy us, the receivers have successfully defended humanity until now. He got involved in local politics and found that while we can't avoid hard times, 
we can make sure we come out of them stronger than we were before. The body and mind are linked. Physical actions are a manifestation of mental actions. Thus, training to protect the body also protects the mind. Controlling your environment controls your thoughts. You, your body, and your environment are part of a larger whole. Control your thoughts. Control your body. Control your environment. And control your faith.
A firearm is simple in some ways, deceptively complex in others, but always dangerous. Gun training anchors the mind in the moment by apprehending the lethality of the tool and focusing on the moment-to-moment -moment use, a receiver is able to strengthen the mind-body link. Like with ideas, objects in the physical reality vary in their utility. Although some thoughts and tools are extremely dangerous, we don't arbitrarily limit what we can use. Rather, we strive to better understand ourselves and our environment so that we may safely handle even the most dangerous situations.
In the face of frustration, it's normal to feel anger and disappointment. Receivers are trained to understand and accept these feelings and allow them to flow through their mind unobstructed and out the other side, leaving only clarity and resolve. To aim a firearm correctly, you must be familiar with the sight picture, um, how the sights look when they are lined up correctly. Handgun sights almost always work in the same way. You line up the front sight in the middle of the gap in the rear sight, and make sure the top of the front sight is level with the top of the rear sight. If zeroed correctly, the bullet should hit right at the top of the front sight at the zero distance, um, usually around 15 yards. For maximum accuracy, you should focus on your front sight, even though it makes the target look blurry. There's no point shooting at a crisp target if you can't tell if your sights are lined up. When explorers die of dehydration, their water bottles are usually not empty. They were saving their resources for later, when it got really bad. When the threat kills people by suicide, it usually turns out that they never asked their family or, or friends for help. They were saving that for later, when it got really bad. If you are under attack by the threat, ask for help now. There is no later.
People with high exposure to media show many symptoms. Listlessness, inability to focus, a feeling of dread and hopelessness. The inversion of values extends to all aspects of life. The media tells you that distant, abstract events that have little to do are the most important. The implication is that your own experience and existence is meaningless. The opposite is true. Your only connection to reality A is through your mind's eye. Instead of looking out, you learn the most critical information by looking inward. To the extent that the body is an extension of the mind, it is the primary aspect of physical reality. Focus attention on the shadow body. Look inward. Listen.
When performing at a peak condition, often the deciding factor is mental state. Ideas have a form and a weight. When you become dedicated to an idea, it takes on a new dimension. It becomes denser, tougher to move, intractable. This tenacious stubbornness is required to become a receiver. The first rule of gun safety is that guns are always loaded. Even if you've just unloaded it seconds ago or seen someone else do it, it is still loaded. Now, this may seem illogical, but you need to practice your double think mind attack and true, true. Most lethal gun accidents are caused by thinking a gun is empty when it's not. For example, if someone is trying to unload a gun, they might pull back the slide to eject the cartridge in the chamber and then remove the magazine. From your receiver training, of course, you know that this sequence is incorrect. The gun is now loaded. But are you sure that you would notice this mistake 100% of the time? Would you trust someone else to notice 100% of the time? That's why you must treat every gun as if it's loaded and to do that reliably, you must truly believe that it's loaded.
in the face of regret, understand that there was no other way that events could have played out. All you can do is learn from the experience and move on. Cooper's fourth rule of gun safety is to know your target and what is beyond it. Bullets can penetrate a lot farther than most people think. Um, how many interior sheetrock walls do you think a typical 9mm bullet will go through? One? Uh, two? More like 20. In a typical gunfight, more shots miss than hit, but all bullets end up somewhere. Unless you live alone in a rural area, there is no pistol or rifle that won't put your family and neighbors at risk. Even hollow point rounds often miss or fail to expand. The safest choice for an effective internal home defense weapon in a populated area is a pump action shotgun loaded with a small buckshot or large birdshot. Experiences are feelings connected to events. If an event that creates negative feelings happens often enough or is especially intense, it can create a phobic reaction. Even after distancing oneself from these events, these phobic elements can persist. Thoughts flow from one to the next, like water flowing down a river. And like water flowing, these thoughts can carve through stone given enough time. Trauma is like a boulder in the river, and over time, a correct sequence of thoughts can cut and shape it, eventually allowing the thoughts to pass safely and smoothly around them.
the threat has become expert in hijacking our attention and inverting our priorities. They make the useless seem important and urgent. The sky is always falling. The, the world is
the mind kill degrades the condition of firearms, making them much more likely to malfunction. You can clear most malfunction by tapping the magazine to make sure it's seated, racking the slide to chamber a new round, and then bang, you're ready to go. Tap, rack, bang. Control your breathing as you approach the door, slowly slicing the pie as you go. You are in the fatal funnel now as you move in a semicircle past the door, but don't rush. See everything. Focus beyond that front sight. Let your body aim for you. Breathe. Corners clear. It's time to choose a direction and commit. Left or right. Which way lies victory? Which way death? Only one way to find out. Breathe. Don't dawdle in the doorway. You're a silhouette and that's where the guns are aimed. And sweep the room smoothly to encompass the whole space. It's a difficult thing, but practice makes perfect. Slow is smooth. Smooth is fast. I did my best. I know uh, it doesn't seem like it. I, I really did. I uh, hope you believe me. I tried and tried and, and tried and nothing, nothing ever worked. And you all hate me. Maybe, maybe I deserve it. Always, always tried. No matter what Alex did, she found that she couldn't avoid being bullied at school. Now, when she read a pamphlet from the receivers, she recognized that she was in danger and stored her sidearm in a safety deposit box to make sure the threat couldn't easily get to it. Now, it still tried to kill her by, by hanging, but the sheets tore. She wore a scarf to hide the marks and started receiver training in earnest. As she became more confident in herself, she reacted less and less to the bullying until it didn't bother her at all. Alex grew to understand that it wasn't her problem whether other people liked her or not, or if she behaved how they wanted her to. When interacting with others, she only had to ask herself whether she liked them. There are many people in this reality who speak with the voice of the threat, and a true receiver can, can recognize that voice, removing its power to deceive. She learned to create boundaries around herself as a shield against the threat 
and how to extend those skills to protect other outcasts at her school. The world of the mind stretches far to the horizon. In this space, it's tempting to dwell in the past or explore possible futures. Attention flits from one distant idea to the next, visiting 100 unlikely scenarios, spreading thinner and thinner. This is the unfocused mind. In contrast, sharp focus is always concentrated on the present moment. What action do you have to take right now? Each new moment necessitating the next thought and action in a correct sequence. In a disordered mind, fear and doubt will often attach itself to whatever events are happening at that moment. These misattributed, diverted feelings can become habitual, compounding the problem of accurate thinking. This leads to confusion, impaired decision-making, and more anxiety in a damaging feedback loop. By grounding thoughts in the present, one can escape this feedback loop. Where are you? What time and year is it? Who are you? What are you doing at this exact moment? What do you see? What do you hear? What do you really hear?
threat exists beyond this world. In this reality, they are weak. Their actions are limited. With great effort, they have infiltrated dreams, implanting ideas. But it is humans who have nurtured these ideas, causing them to grow and spread. For these people who were already compromised and who have nurtured these damaging thoughts, there is no hope. As much as we would like to reach out to them to help them, we must first focus inward on ourselves. For us, there is still some hope. We must focus all our energy on catching this small chance. When exposed to contaminated thoughts, remember not to be reactive. Instead, take the moment to act inward. Activate your mind tech.
close your eyes and imagine that you are a cloud floating over the city. Breathe in. One, two, three, four. Hold. One, two, three, four. Breathe out. One, two, three, four. Pause. One, two, three, four. Breathe in. Imagine a kill drone weaving between the buildings. Hold. The drone looks up, seeing the dark cloud. Breathe out. It starts flying towards cover. Pause. Bang. Lightning blasts it to sparkling pieces. Breathe in. Breathing is vital to life. In order to project deadly force with precision, a receiver temporarily becomes death and pauses the breath.